And as far as I know, there's no better algorithm for protocol session than that. So I'll show you all the details later on tomorrow or today how to do that efficiently. So that's basically protocol search for you. Oh, yeah. Um, protocol search uses lots of bandwidth because if every node is asked, once a minute asking 1,000 nodes, that means you will also, also every node will get 1,000 search questions per minute. Uh, it's compared to uh, this hash tables, it's a little, it's a little better at doing complex searches like uh, Engine Yard and Near for not Dublin. Stuff like that is slightly easier to do on a broadcast um, search than on a distributed hash table. And in a, on a broadcast search, you can actually use. with expressions. Regular, regular, regular expressions. Oh, right. You can easily do regular expressions on a group concept. By doing that on a display hash table, sounds hard and it seems hard. So you can do very complex search uh, stuff. But you have to search hard. Okay. Any questions about that? Distributed hash tables. How many here think they know what a distributed? Well, how many here think they don't know what a uh, distributed hash table is? Oh, I'll do an overview anyway. Uh, basically, we connect all the nodes. All the nodes get each node get an address, and then we connect them in a big ring. And when we publish a piece of data, we're, uh, for instance, a movie. That's perhaps not the best example, but let's use that example. We don't, uh, we don't send, for instance, if the movie is named um, um, Motorbike, you don't put the movie in the node name M, you just send the, a little message, a little address that, uh, package to that this node, and so that tells uh, that if you're looking for M, there is a node that has Motorbike. So it might be this node that has the film, but here there is a link, so to speak, to that node. Uh, in, in the case of just a database field. So any node that wants to find motorbike, they look at the M and ask, is there any match on the motorbike? Yeah, there's one file over there. So you connect to that one and fetch the file. Or actually, normally it's the name of this fi file sharing as well. Uh, so you can download it. Uh, let's see what we're going to see. Oh, okay. uh, first of all, uh, we can't have one node for each address because perhaps we just have one million nodes, but there are more possible names than that. So the data is stored in the closest nodes. As you see, this is possible for a span from M to P. Uh, also, neighboring nodes are back, up, uh, back uh, backing this one up. If this one disappears, they should have a copy of the data because then the search request will end up in the closest neighbors. So they're backing each other's up. And that's actually one of the hard problems to do correctly. <coughs> we'll go on that, uh, that later. Okay. So, one question for you. Uh, a list or a ring has a natural order. Yeah. Does a hypercube have a natural order? It does. does it? Yeah, because a hypercube has an address space. I can show you it. Let's see. That's a good question. Hypercube, if you look at a um, one dimensional hypercube, yeah. it's two diff nodes. It's node 0 and 1. If you extend it to two dimensional one, then you have nodes 0 and 1, actually 0, 0, and 0, 1, and that's 1, 0, and then 1, 1. It's quite a nice. So they have addresses. And okay. as you extend it, you order, for each extra dimension, you get one bit more address. Ah, okay, okay, so you're finding all the order. Yeah, yeah. So it has one. Uh, happy cubes, we use them as a routing overlay on these path tables, and we use them. Because, uh, well, when you have a a target address, and you can simply compare it with your own address and take any bit that doesn't match and send a message to, to one of your neighbors that has that bit set. So you actually have several ways to route messages here. So it's very simple to route around problems like that. But we'll get more into it later. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, where were we? Should we, um, should we uh, break up? Uh, yeah, we can do. To, uh, we might go because uh, there's a is this is after us to get some lunch. Yeah. Um, do, do, I, do I continue for a few minutes? I can just say one thing more before we go. Okay. Cool. 
Of course, going around the ring is very inefficient, so we have shortcuts across the ring. We have lots of links in some small manner, and those links that we can find in a shorter path. These links are the routing of the link. That's what we call it. So that's then I can stop that. <laughs> Just a question on that, um, when you're scaling the amount of data that you're handling and the amount of nodes, um, is there a natural way to, to deal with that? Like, in, like the Dynamo stuff deals with it by uh, making these virtual nodes where they're, they're a lot smaller and each node manages a couple bunch of... You don't need to do that. There's other ways to do that. Okay, so you can evenly distribute it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, we have to, there, yeah, as you see, the data will tend to cluster up because there, we, we used to call that the Britain problem because in back then, Britain Spears was the most famous one. So there were too many Britain Spears files in the database. And that's so the corner that we're handling B would just a flock of flock. And to, how to handle that, we'll talk about There's lots of tricks and methods to spread the data out in the smart way. We'll talk about that. Yeah, right. That's a good problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have another name for that, but I don't remember the names. For me, it's still the British, the British, the British problem. That's good. Yeah.